I love to say it short and sweet. This, this was a disappointing year. You know, I think when we look at it from the start to the finish, there were a lot of bright spots, a lot of things that we were excited about, and some things didn't work out. So we're going to spend this off season really looking at everything that we can to get better. Certainly, I, I, you almost have to salute the thank Vegas. What preseason said, we're going to win 35 games. We won 35 games. That's disgusting to me. What we had the potential to do, I think, internally, we have much higher goals, but you can't argue with your record. It is what it is. We got to get better, and that's our intention moving forward. You know, I think you got to spend a little bit of time debriefing, kind of looking and focusing on your process versus the outcome and see where you can get better with what we have. We know we have to continue to add talent. I think we have to do a lot more uh, introspection in terms of what can we do that we can control, the shot charts, uh, where, where you're getting in your offense, what defensively. There's some things we got to do better, particularly transition defense. But I think the talent uh, uh, this year gets a little bit of an incomplete from the standpoint didn't get a lot of opportunities to play together. So that messes up your cohesion. Talking to KP, he likes to use the word rhythm. We can never get a rhythm together. And I'm not going to dispute any of that. But at the end of the day, we, we got to do better. And that's our intention. So with that, I'll take questions. Thank you for being here. Sorry we couldn't find a smaller room. <laughs> Tommy, good morning. Um, you, you said it's a disappointing year. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think are some of the main reasons why you guys fell short? Well, again, it, it's already been visited quite a few times of the consistency of the availability, I think, affects a lot of things. And people may not always put this together, but for players to get the opportunity to play together, to become cohesive unit, I think is important. And it's, you know, you, you, your mind plays tricks on you. You say, well, KP was here last year. Kuz was here last year. Brad was here last year. But they never played together last year. So really, it was all kind of starting from the jump. Brad and, uh, Brad and Kyle had some experience playing together. But when you bring KP at the deadline, Brad was out basically the rest of the year. And then Kyle went down late in the season. And none of that matters. The excuses are what they are. But I think that was a big part of it. I think we had some. Uh, some moves that we made in the off season. Looking back, a couple got you know made a trade. One of the players, it didn't work out what we thought was going to happen. It's nothing against him. Sometimes that just happens. That's why you make a lot of transactions. You always try to add to your team. Some things work out, some things don't. And I, I just honestly think this team, um, you know, when we were going into deadline or we we're going into All Star break, right? We just went eight and four, had a hell of a win in Minnesota, where we were down and it was clicking. Everybody did what they needed to do to get back in the game, won that game, and you feel really great. And uh, came back out of break, had a really difficult loss to New York, kicked a game with Toronto, two losses to Atlanta, a tough one with Milwaukee. Like those, we just, we got to get amnesia. I tell our players that all the time. Let this, let that loss go. We got another game. And I think those, those tough losses kind of affected us. We got to get mentally tougher, for sure. I think that's something that, it starts from the top down. We, we have to really push guys to, to get through. When a, when a loss is there, leave it there. When a win is a great win, enjoy it for that night. Get ready for the next game. We got to keep moving. I think that's something we got to work on for sure. We got to get tougher. Um, you know, I think we saw some great progress. Unfortunately, some of the young players got to play more this year than we had projected because there was availability of minutes, right? And we saw that with Jordan Goodwin. That was a great thing that happened because of an unfortunate incident, right? Where you got somebody that's injured, he gets to step up. Corey Kispert, you know, I think if we had to do something with Corey today, he would qualify as a starter. That wasn't the, that wasn't the plan, you know. Two years in, and he's got the most threes in franchise history for a two-year player, and he's done a lot of things that hey, I'm I'm grateful. I'm glad to see his development, but that also says he was playing a lot more minutes than we had planned because guys in front of him weren't getting the minutes. So, you know, I think those are some of the things right there. Um, and less than 24 hours later, you know, we're still kind of, we have a, a bigger way of going about evaluating the season. And when that's done, I think we'll feel a lot better the direction we're going. We know that the draft is coming. Um, if there's any consolation to going through what we went through, we should have a really good pick. We have free agency. Um, we have a lot of things that we can do to get better. So those come in time right now. We really need to be where we're at with our players, with our staff. Let's all download, see what we can do better. Is the goal still to re-sign Kuz and KP? And oh, yeah. How, how, does, how does the 
availability that you've alluded to when it mm -hmm. comes to them and Brad factor into that? I think you got to look at it. Certainly, that's a concern. Availability is a big piece in this business, but so is a lack of talent. And I think when those guys are on the floor, we're a lot more talented. And um, that, it kind of starts with that. And who knows where it goes in the summer. That's our, our uh, process will tell us by the time that July rolls around, we'll know exactly what, what's going to happen. I think we had great response from both players that have options to opt out that they want to be here. And I think everybody, this is the time to say, okay, what is it going to take for us to be better? What are you going to do and what are you willing to sacrifice to get better? And that's for everybody. But certainly with those guys, they have options to go other places and they choose to be here. They want to be here because they're going to, they know they can win. And I think that's really important. So, um, and it's not just those guys. You know, I look, probably the most devastating injury, quite honestly, to us this year was DeLon. You know, missed 29 consecutive games. There's the death by paper cuts where, where guys miss a couple games here, a couple games there, but he missed a big chunk of the season, and that's really the, the meat of the season when he was missing. And that was difficult because you saw his impact when he came back. Quite honestly, he's an all-defensive candidate when he's fully healthy all year long. And you notice his impact when he's playing, and you sure notice it when he's not. You know, when we really wanted to address defense, this summer, that was a big get for us. And he came in and, and you know, those first first few games you saw it. And then when he returned, you saw it. And we need that clearer picture. We, we can't afford to lose someone like him for 29 straight games. That was tough. Someone else step up. That's great. We had some other guys get those minutes. But the idea was to have a healthy DeLon. In the 35 games that Beal, Kuzma, and Porzingis mm -hmm. played together, what did you like about their rhythm that they had when they did play? I think they really played well off of each other. You know, there's plenty of space out there. You know, KP can shoot just about from anywhere out on the floor and have a mismatch. And that really helps, you know, when you have gravity people out there, that opens it up a little bit more for Bradley. And for Kyle, you know, I, I think um, you know, Kyle was a heck of a player when we acquired him, but we, I've seen him climb several levels since he's been here and that's been fun to see and I think he's still got more to give more to do um, but we, in Chris Epps, um area I, I think he and Brad really w work well together in just a two-man game they, they really read each other well and Kyle's such a smart player he can fit in wherever so those are really encouraging things for sure I think we got to get a little bit more shot creation out on the floor with them probably a little bit more rebounding with them I think we inserted Daniel into the lineup next to, to KP, and that those two really do well together. But there's still, you know, there's another layer we got to go up to to get where we want to be. And it's not just that starting five, it's, it's that top eight, top nine. And, and that's something we address. Doesn't happen overnight. And God, well, I, <laughs> Lord knows I've, I've lost a lot of sleep trying to figure out how you can expedite this process. But sometimes you got to just stay patient. You know, it's a, it's a maddening pursuit. But I think we're on to something with these talented guys, and I can't say enough about their character. You know, we, we look around, and I, I love our problems. You know, and, and I think we continue to build. You know, talent gets to the NBA, character keeps you here, and I'm really proud of this team. You know, I was walking around the arena last night, and the workers on the fourth level, the, two of our players had, had gave them, treated them to something really neat, just to say thank you to people that work very hard that really don't ever get noticed and I had to find out from the workers that those guys aren't telling people you know I'm really proud of that kind of character that character is what you're doing when nobody else is looking and I think we have good people and but that that win-loss column column still doesn't care about that we got to continue to build and win, put a winning product out on the floor but I'm proud of these players I'm very grateful for our staff our coaches our medical media, everybody that has a hand in this business, uh, the countless hours, you know, they're, they're undefeated. We have great people, and I think we're onto something with that. Tommy, I know you know the, the history here in this city with regard to this team and, and how long it's been, and, uh, and you can't manage a team based on what happened before you got here. I understand that, but what is the sense of urgency to get this thing turned around as quickly as possible, yeah, knowing, knowing that, you know, it's been a long time since yeah. this team has been a consistent, you know, 
championship level threatening team. Oh, there's no question. And, and these players weren't here for all that history. And you got to really start where you're at. I, I, I acknowledge it's frustrating. The fan base is frustrated. We're frustrated. So there's a huge sense of urgency. But that, that sense of urgency didn't guide me to make a crazy trade at deadline this year. We could have done some things to probably win three or four more games, but add $30, $40 million to our payroll, knowing that what's coming up this summer. I thought it was time uh, to see what Danny could do with more responsibility. That was the trade we made at deadline. And, uh, make sure everybody was happy with their role, and if they're not, then uh, you know wish them well, and they can go find their role somewhere else. But the the most important thing is sometimes the moves that you don't do to preserve your opportunity to grow in the outgoing seasons. You know, I'm, I I very uh, reflective, especially this time of year. Like, what 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 could we have done better? Where were we at? But you know, I think I said it before. We're, we're not trying to just go get the eighth spot and pat each other on the back and say, well, we made it to the play in or anything. like. The, that would have been a great accomplishment for this team when you look at who missed this season and whatnot. But that really, in the big picture, to your point, get us where we want to go, it's going to take much bigger than that. So let's keep pushing. You know, I think there's an opportunity, like I said, to add talent through the draft. I think there's an opportunity to, to retain free agents that we, we've always done. That's why we can't always, we haven't been a cap team in over 20 years. It's hard. We were able to do things in free agency that we've added pieces over the years. I, I dispute anybody say that guys don't want to come to D.C. I think that's we lock up our players uh, that we you know truly value and have put in the time. I think that's important. It, it speaks to the NBA. And you know, now you rely on your best players to play their best and keep adding talent. Um, but the sense of urgency to answer your question is huge. You know, we can't wait anymore. It's time. And, and we got to keep pushing all the different areas that we can and, and look at every opportunity to, to get better. Uh, with, uh, with also knowing that no one player or players is responsible for a record, the three players that you're building around mm -hmm. played 35 games and the record was 16 and 19. Nope. Not all their fault, but on the other hand, they didn't, weren't able to no, raise it, the team it doesn't, above. It doesn't inspire, right? Like, okay, these guys are going to, based on that 16 and 19, but you got to project it out too and see the games that were involved. And I don't think 35 games is enough to make a decision on anybody. I think you would agree with that and your Hall of Fame credentials. And nobody ever says 35 games, hey, like, we tried it, let's go on. You know, rebuilding's hard and retooling is hard and getting lucky is hard. What you got to do is continue to add talent, get better every time. And, and I, I, I say it till make your ears bleed, but it takes talent to get talent, so let's keep pushing that direction, make sure we're developing them to the very best. And I, I think we saw some success stories. And then we saw when you take a lot of swings, some work and some don't, and let's keep going. But the 16 and 19, we, we own that. That's, that's definitely true, but that's a really small snapshot compared to what it could be. It's up to us to really unlock those, that trio and, and hopefully continue to see the good things. And, you know, I, I look at the, yeah, there's so many wins. And, one of the maddening things is I honestly felt we were a little bit better on the road than we were at home. We got a first – you have to have home court advantage. D.C. has fantastic fans. We, we need to have this place rocking, and that's on us. you got to put a product out on the court for people to do that. But I think they saw some great wins at home, uh, but certainly on the road. And go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the teams in this league. And even just recently when we were down people, being able to go – you know, but to the consistency – the key to the NBA, right, is those the 401k month is that October, November. You got to put your wins in. You can't say, okay, if we just go undefeated in April, we'll be fine. Like, when does that happen? You've got to put in the work all year. And you look back, and we had an 0 and 10 stretch. And the guys, you know, everybody battled. We didn't point fingers, but we were 0 and 10. That's hard to overcome. Then you get to the injuries and you add all the different things that happened in the season. And I double checked and no one cares. That's on us. We, we got to keep pushing. But you know, you really have to approach the season in a way that says, hey, if you're playing the right way and you're doing the right things that are within your control, the record takes care of itself. I think sometimes we really look like a really good defensive team. And if you took 10 game samples, again, to your point, is that enough? No. But there were times we were top five, top 10 defensive team top five, top 10 offensive team. And then the next 10 games come and you go down. So why is that? What happened? Why can't we be consistent? That's the questions we got to answer. Tommy, you mentioned the defense in particular. I know that was 
priority when you guys brought in Wes? Yeah. And is there anything in particular you think is holding the team back on, on that end? Hmm. That, that's something that I think if you've asked 12 people, you might get 12 different answers. Overall, I think it still comes down to it's a controllable thing on the effort end. It's a controllable thing, particularly in transition defense, and it's communication. And one thing that's disappeared – and you'll see in the playoffs, like the teams that really have veteran players that have played a lot of games together, they're going to have an immediate impact on the playoffs because it's easier for them. It's a big thing. Communication, right? Being able to treat game 82, game one, it has the same approach every time. You can't reinvent yourself during the season and say, okay, today we're going to start talking. Today we're going to help out. On, you know, It has to be from day one. And I think that's something we all have to demand more accountability um, and that consistency is hard. We're giving Wes, you know, a whole lot of credit for night in, night out, didn't know he was going to have out there. But I think the overall tenant of this team, the pillars of our team, have to be one through 12. Because the next person up, they got to know my job is the exact same as the guy ahead of me in terms of the effort and knowing what we're doing offensively, defensively. Those are very important. I think that's something we can all do better, for sure. Tommy, two quick ones for you. One, you're sitting with Capital City Goga guys get interviewed at. You can build through the G League, the NBL, yeah. overseas. The infrastructure you have right now with that Gogo team, uh, how does that make you feel? Well, it's tremendous. That was our vision when we got to Gogo, and I'm, I'm really hands on with the Gogo. We, we select the players, we put them there. There is a reason that they're there, and we have a, a really good path that we create for players that come in and, and succeed. And it gives me great gratitude. You know, we have a fantastic infrastructure, and what Amber Nichols, Mike Williams are able to do when we, we it's, a, it's a tough job. They're, they're getting players that are dropped in their lap, and this is what we need them to do, and they, they do a great job. They really do. But I think it's important to see the success that Jordan Goodwin had. Understand this league, uh, you cover it, but there's players that really, they watch everything. And we're in a recruiting business at all times, and I think people see, hey, you got an opportunity. Come, come to D.C., you, you can succeed. And, you know, I was most proud, one of the most proud things ever. It, it reminded me my big recruiting pitch with Chris Dunn. I said, Chris, years ago, I, I, you know, there was a player that was out of the league and was really, really hurting and just needed a chance, and it was Sean Livingston. And it was Sean was done. And he came back here and got his career back on track. And I said, Chris, it would give me nothing but pleasure. If, if we can get, get you back in the NBA, that's the goal. If it could be here, that would be great. You know, but that opportunity didn't exist because he, he couldn't be a two-way guy. We didn't have a roster spot. But that goal, what Chris is doing with the Jazz, gives me as much pride as what Jordan did with us. Like it's just neat to 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 be fulfilled. You know, when we say these things can happen and they do, I think that was huge. I see the prop, the the potential that you see what Quentin Jackson's doing now. Jay Huff, we brought Jay. Jay was back. We had him originally a year ago. I mean, we like to have those kinds of players around. Yeah. It's really institutionally. I, I'm proud of what our organization does with that. Hey, Tommy. Hello. You said uh, earlier that you like the team to be mentally tough, and that starts from the top bottom. Um, where does your face of the franchise, Brad, take accountability there? You know, I think he, he's going to be the first one to say how disappointed you know he is that, that the season that he ended up having, because the, the numbers show he had a, he had a very efficient season. I think it gets uncomfortable. Um, it's hard when you're in every single story, no matter what, because you're the cornerstone of the, of the franchise. And I try to take that stress off of them. Look, you, you are certainly our, our highest paid player, but really you're, you're somebody that helps drive this team, but you're not the only person. You have help, you have people, and, and we got to build around it. I, I share his frustration. I, I think it's hard for a player when you're not able to play and you see the team losing. It's hard to be out there on the floor. Things aren't going your way. You saw Brad win some big games for us and take over games. And you saw him try to take over games, and it didn't happen. And everything that comes with that struggle, you know. But I'm very impressed by his ability every day to put in the hard work to be an example to our young players. And, and understand leadership comes in so many different forms. Some people are very vocal. And some people lead by example. And some people by what they don't do and what they don't allow other people to do and holding teammates accountable. So I think for Bradley um, 
to miss 32 games that certainly wasn't his vision of what a great season would look like. But I think he's been, you know, if anything, he probably sacrificed a lot in terms of shots and, and things that he's, he could very well go do. You know, I, I would expect him to score more next year. I think that would help us. I think he needs to stretch his game and, and continue to shoot more threes because that's something he's shown he can do. But he can also create. You know, we got to really be careful when we look at lineups, we're making sure we give him plenty of uh, people to play off of. But I, I think he's still one of the better scorers in the NBA. And I, I think he's, he's uh, in, getting in the prime of his career. We got to keep him, keep him healthy. That's the biggest thing. Did that answer your question? Um, somewhat, but you did mention. Or did I leave it short? Uh, well, and leadership, because I know kind of mm -hmm. a couple years ago, he had some moments where he was really working on body language and mm -hmm. working on speaking up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, has that continued? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we're, any of us are perfect, and any of us are ever going to get to that, that day when we're just absolutely great leaders. I think we all learn as we go. And one thing we all have to channel is what the difference is between frustration and what you can control. And night in, night out, if you're a fan of the NBA, like we all, you know, we watch games every night, and you see players have tough nights. Coaches have tough nights. So I, I don't expect anybody to be perfect, but I expect you to keep trying to be better. And I think Bradley does that. I think we can all do better. Um, but certainly, you know, I think the biggest challenge this summer is to put this season behind us and focus on forward. What can we all do better? What can we do different? What can we bring? The great ones, they always bring something new to their game. But the great ones also make everybody else better. And, and I look at that when you ask about leadership. And I give Corey Kisper all the credit. He, Corey's the one doing the work, but Bradley's maybe the one that's nudging him and showing him some things. And, you know, it's just – so Corey's out there doing that, and that's very noticeable, his improvement. But I also see, like, you know, Johnny Davis had – there was 10 bumps in the road. He hit 11 of them. He had a tough rookie year, and it's, it ended on a really high note. And our players never stopped believing in him and pushing him and people in his ear encouraging him. You know, it, it means a lot to a player from his peers. I think peer pressure is the best kind of pressure. And I see all that, a lot of that leadership from Bradley. Uh, Corey kind of giving Johnny tips because Corey went through a tough spot his first year. You know, the <laughs> mascots were hitting shots from half court and he couldn't hit a shot. Like it, he, he had that to draw upon and share that experience. I think Bradley's had a lot of experience with, with highs and lows. You know, if, if you can get through a whole season injury free, God bless you anymore. But I think he's, he was there when, when DeLon was hurt and helping him through that. So I, I see leadership appear in places maybe you don't get a chance to see. But we all need better body language for sure. Um, Tommy, so looking ahead, you mentioned the draft, free agency. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for specifically from a talent and character perspective from the next players that wear a Wizards jersey? Well, Every position, you, know, you, you evaluate and say, is this person that we have at this position, are they capable of stepping up and, and being a, a key player? Are they a role player? Are they a star in their role? Or are they you know, out of the rotation type? And we try to really focus on the top rotation pieces. And if there's opportunities to get better in those areas through the draft, you know, I, I'm a big believer. Look at the best player available. We have certain positions in need, but I think we have some vets coming back throughout our roster, that, a, that there's not a need that says a rookie has to start from day one. If they earn it, they will start from day one. But I think it's, it's better to have people come along. You know, I saw some impact in, in anybody that thinks it's you know, the end of the season. Those aren't garbage minutes to us. They're not garbage minutes to players. I, I can't speak to fans, but those minutes that Johnny got, you know, we were able to, thank goodness, the time he spent with the go-go Plus what he did with the Wizards, he went over a thousand minutes this year of minutes uh, of game time. But that confidence that he took on the way out the door, four for 20 aside, you know, he had a tough night last night, but I think just the confidence that he was able to get back into his swing tells you, like, I think he'll be a, a more polished player next year. Probably expect a lot more from him next year, earlier next year. Can't rewind whatever happened to him this year, but that, those are the kind of players that, 
look internally first before you go into the draft. And, and if there's somebody there at that position that didn't get a chance to shine, like I would use Johnny as an example, maybe that, that position of need isn't as pronounced as, as maybe people would think. I, I have confidence he's going to be a good player. Similar things happened to him at Wisconsin. Right? He, his first year was kind of almost a uh, – nobody, nobody saw what was coming. And then the next year he, he took off. And so some, some players come quick, some players take time. We gotta be patient. The draft, free agency, we'll, we'll evaluate. There's some players that, that you know, things ha things come up that we're not even thinking about right now. You know, as other teams lose in the playoffs and they gotta retool their roster. And you know, it's, you gotta have a lot of conversations and continue to have conversations. I talked to 29 teams in a month's time. I've talked to every team at least two, three times, just catching up with people. So you have a good pulse on their roster, and likewise, and those things happen. Sometimes trades happen in, in one phone call, and sometimes they take two years. And we'll see how it goes. And what was the goal for this season? I know you've mentioned words like you all are disappointed, yeah. you know, hurt to be sitting here um, talking with us today because the season is now over. So yeah. what was the goal for this season? Well, as I mentioned several times, the playoffs, and at least to get to postseason and, and to get that opportunity to get that taste and get moving forward. You know, I think that we didn't run from that. I, I don't think we, you know, we, we sure didn't let down the prognosticators, right? We landed exactly where we were. So our internal goals were much higher than what people thought of this team. And they should be. You know, you always want to be better than people think. And the fact that we didn't do that, we can rationalize and say, well, all these injuries, all these different things. At the end of the day, it is what your record is. And now let's get better.